Welcome back to the final video in our module on queries. So in this video, we're going to be looking at F by also known as filter by. And in the last videos, we have seen we can do a combination of aggregations and grouping together. So we have seen you can do something like sum price by sim. Um, so the next step on from this would be using that result from that computation to further filter on your original table. Um, and that would take multiple steps. Um, and we will show how you would do that kind of on its, on its own with the multiple steps. And then we'll show um, how you can use the filter by to avoid that and basically do it all in one step. Um, so it's basically a way to avoid nested queries and allow you to do this kind of computation all in one line. So this is the form of F by. So you'll pass the aggregation. So whether it's max, min, sum, count, etc., the column you want to aggregate on. F by is the keyword and then the group will be the column you want to group on. So that's similar to the column you want to group by. And like with by, we can have multiple columns in here filtered by. It doesn't have to just be one. So let's pretend we don't know anything about filter by or F by yet. And let's do this um, kind of the, the longer way. So I'm going to skip over this and go down here. And what we're first going to do is get the average sizes by the column EX from trade for the last date. So if I run this, you'll see I get two results returned. Um, I have an average size for both N and O, which are my two exchanges. OK, um, now I want to filter on my original trade table by this um, X average column. So the way to do that would be to join that back onto the original table. Um, and to do that in Q, um, we need to use a left join. Um, now in the next module in the fundamental series, we'll be going into table joins in a lot more detail. Um, so don't worry too much about this notation and um, this will all be described. Um, but for now, you can just understand that beforehand when we showed trade, you'll see I only had columns up as far as EX. And then after this statement here, so I'm selecting from trade where date is the last date, and then I'm left joining on res by, um, I get this new column called EX average. So everywhere where I had N, I get 54.44547. So N, all these Ns are 54.44547. And then for all the Os, I get this other value joined on. So they're just truncated. Um, and then one that, once I have this intermediary uh, table or result stored with this new column, I'm then able to do my comparison. So I'm able to say, where are my sizes um, either greater than less or less than? So if I wanted to do um, where my sizes were less than this average size, um, I could stick that in at the end. So now I have this interim result stored. I can say, right, I'm now going to filter where all these sizes are less than the average for that specific exchange. Okay. So obviously there's quite a few steps involved. We also had to introduce that left join there. Um, to avoid this, we could have just simply run it all in the one line using filter by. And the filter by um, comes after our uh, where. So it's part of our condition. Um, so if I have other conditions like the date one, I'll put them first and then I'll put my filter by. And this is following the same form as up here. And I'm just doing where size is less than. So remember down here, we did size is less than the exchange average. So that exchange average is basically being replaced with this here part, which is doing the filter by. So this is saying, get me the average size and filter by every single exchange. And then that's basically, um, you can think of it as virtually being joined on like we're doing here. And then that's ready to use for comparison. Um, now this doesn't actually create a new column and join it on. Um, if you look at the result from this table, You'll see I don't have any additional columns added on. It doesn't need to do that. Um, so if we wanted to make sure those two results were the same, we could say, for example, um, with F by here. And then if we go down to our other result here, let's call this one no F by here. And then if we run um, meta on with F by and meta on no, F by, you'll see there's one more column there. So obviously if we ran meta and, and did match on those, they wouldn't match. So let's try if we delete that exchange average column. We see now they have the same table structure. And if we get rid of the metas, 
Do the tables match? They do, they're identical. So both of those methods um, get to the same result, um, except without the filter by, you obviously might need to delete this column um, if you only added it on to do that calculation afterwards. Um, so hopefully this illustrates how much more straightforward using filter by is compared to the above statements. Um, you don't have to use the filter by after the where clause. Um, you can use it elsewhere in your statement if you don't want to actually filter you know, your results out, if you just want to see um, what the filter by would do. So for example here, I'm gonna select a few columns and then I'm gonna do my condition here. So I'm gonna say, create a new column called less than X and I'm gonna say that's gonna be the size says that are last in the average size. So I end up just getting a Boolean result here because I'm doing a comparison. So, um, and now that's just pop been populated in a column, whereas before I was actually using it in my where condition um, to filter on only those. So you see here now I'm able to see, okay, um, which ones are less than X or which ones are greater than X. And if you just, if you're interested in proving that you could actually also just stick this in and we'll call this um, average. And you see here, 65 um, is not less than 54, so I get a zero, so it's false. 42 is less than 54, so I get a one. 32 is less than 54, so I get a one, and so on. So that's just proving kind of what the filter by is doing. So if it helps you to add it to the, um, you know, in between the select and the from, just to see what's happening, and then once you're happy with the filter by you can then move it into the where condition um which is a nice feature um and then we're just showing a similar thing here yeah so you might want to do it kind of step by step so you're adding the filter by on its own then the conditional just to see what's kind of happening um okay so have a go at using f by um in this final example and um, there's also another example of f by with a different data set available in our introductory workshop. So if you want to do some more practice on the FBI, head over there. And once you're happy with that, that brings us to the end of our queries module. So we obviously covered a lot um, in this module. Um, we've seen our select statement, um, the different sign tax we can use there. And we also touched on what a virtual column is. We looked at the where clause in some detail and how important your ordering of your columns are and knowing if your table is partitioned and, and how that should be your first um, part of your where condition. We also looked at grouping with the by clause and then combining that with some of our temporal arithmetic, like using our X bar and our dot notation on time dot minute to be able to group um, into buckets, which is a very common requirement. Then we looked at using exec, which allows us to extract remember as a list rather than a dick. Then we looked at using exec, which differs from select in that instead of returning a table, it can return a list or dictionary. We also looked at using update to change our um, columns and rows of our table. Um, and then we also looked at deleting data from our table and then finish it up with the F by. So um, head over to our exercises as before. So we can just head up a level to the exercises notebook. And we've got loads more exercises in there for you to go through um, and to kind of go over what we've discussed here. Um, and yeah, that's it for the queries module. I'll see you in our next module, hopefully very soon.